Hello, my name is Sam. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this video, I'm going to be going through how to uh, use preform scan to model to prevent cupping on already built models. So a model, uh, orthodontic or horseshoe arch uh, model that is built in a CAD software and is hollow. And if you want to print that directly in the build platform, it could have cupping issues. So you can use actually scan a model to prevent these issues without going back into other CADs, or if you just get the file from a provider, you can make easy edits all in preform, which is great. Um, this is uh, uh, one video of uh, a long series. If this is the first video you're watching, um, I highly recommend going back and watching some of my earlier videos, especially the one that goes through the basic workflow. Uh, this one again is we're going to take a hollow model and how to make it not uh, have cupping. And just a quick explanation on what cupping actually is, is when uh, cupping occurs when you have a hollow model and it, it like a plunger sticks to the build platform. So when it lifts from uh, the, the layer that it's printing, it can actually have the build, uh, sorry, the resin tank film stick to it, and then it pops off, and it just provides, and sometimes produces, really bad looking prints, like you have bad layer registration, and it's because that uh, uh, resin tank is popping up on you. So, let's pull up an example here. So, you can either load it in through scan for, to model, or you can bring it in just by dragging your file in here, Here's my file, and here's our hollow model. So let me just show you what it looks like without any treatment at all. So best way to do this uh, is orientation button here on the left-hand toolbar, select a base. I'm gonna click on that bottom flat surface. It's gonna snap it down. Let me just uh, pull it over here, uh, turn off my little menu here, and let's look at it. So I have printability turned off now, but let's turn it on, and you'll see that Preform is detecting a cup. This is exactly what I was talking about. As this, it actually makes a lot more sense if you use the, sl the slicer over here. So this kind of virtually prints uh, the, the part, right? And you can see, as it prints, it's a pretty much uh, a plunger. Um, this could create suction. Maybe not one, necessarily, but if you have three to six or more arches on one build platform and they're all like this, it's gonna be a major issue. And one other issue is when you try to remove hollow models with pretty thin walls like this from the build platform, there could be a risk of breakage. So we're gonna actually solve cupping and make removing from build platform easier in one easy step. Uh, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to add a chamfer to the back of this model. Um, and the f best way to first start is, first of all, turn off printability uh, so it doesn't get in your way. The first way to start is I'll s use my view tools to do snap to a top view. You want to align the rearmost molars uh, on the line that's on the build platform. That's step one. Second, you want to use the view tool again, hit the down arrow, and get your side view like this. This is how you want to angle your part to be cut because the plane cut comes, par it's parallel to the build platform. And if you could imagine that sliding up, you want to cut a, 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 a bevel or chamfer on the back. So I'm just going to angle this up and I want enough of an angle so I don't really have to support it, but it's also a good pry point. So I'm going to do something like this. That is probably pretty good. I go into the scan to model button here over on the left and it's gonna ask me to import. If you click on a model, it doesn't say import anymore. It says next, that's what we want. We wanna treat the model that's selected. Orientation is already complete, next. Trim uh, plane position. So when you boot up the program at first, it'll come in at zero, and you pretty much just wanna quickly put this into position where it's not cutting any you know, important anatomy off, and it's also giving you a nice little pry point. So I'm gonna check both sides here. That looks pretty good. Next. Uh, importantly, base height for these types of operations always keep at zero, and we're just going to create the model here. So this is going to calculate, and let's see what we get. All right, the model is done calculating, and notice that the plane cut, the surface that is cut, is now snapped down to the build platform. That is by default, and that's great. The way to put it right back to where it's supposed to be is go back into your orientation tool, and select base on that bottom most flat surface. Now it's back down. Let's turn our printability back on and look at that, no cupping whatsoever. 
Um, this is now going to print beautifully. It's got plenty of air to be able to go in between those print layers, and you've now got a beautiful pry point. I've mentioned this in my other videos, but it's always smart to think about putting the pry points position towards the outside of the build platform so you physically can get there in, with, in there with a the scraper and get the part off easily. Uh, you really just need to lift one edge and just very, very gently work around. Don't do too much in one spot. That's the key. Uh, so this is now ready. Um, you can automatically generate supports on this, manually add them, whatever you want to do, treat it like normal, print it near vertically, whatever. Uh, it's ready to go. So you can send it to the printer, do more like this, do them all at once, uh, and, and you're good. All right. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.